Today we give God thanks for the lives of those in the family of faith. We give thanks for the company of saints whom we have lost along the way and who are no longer present with us. Welcome to our television broadcast, Methodist Voices in Word and Song. Let us join in the call to worship. Come into God's presence with singing and praise. We join the assembly of faithful followers. Let us worship the Almighty with words of praise and songs of joy. We join the hopeful saints of God. Sing a new song as we recall the lives of those who have gone before. Sing and rejoice in God's name. The hymn numbered 280 in our voices in praise. A safe stronghold, our God is still.
let us pray. God of ages past and days yet to come, we come into your presence with joy and thanksgiving. We recall those who have gone before us, their examples of faith and wisdom. We bless your name for all your servants who have finished their course, rest from their labors, for those who will come after us, for those who are with us today, we bring the offering of our lives. May you enable us to be faithful in our weakness and true disciples of your kingdom. For Christ's sake we pray. Amen. A prayer of thanksgiving. Let us pray. We thank you, O God, for holding within your care those whom you sent before us. They prepared a road that we could follow. Thank you for their faithfulness in pressing on when the road became difficult to traverse. Moments when they were injured or they stumbled, they kept the faith. Thank you that you are constantly with us. We make our journeys of faith. May we never forget or lose sight of your love for humanity. Amen. We will now have a time of praise by full joy. We want to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across the sky, that all that they see the truth and know that he is the way to to see Jesus lifted high, a banner that flies across the sky, that all men may see the truth and know that he is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Across the sky, that all men may see the truth and know that He is the way to heaven. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. We want to see, we want to see, we want to see Jesus lifted high. Lord, you are good. Your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. Lord, you are good and your mercy endureth forever. and tongue from generation to generation we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we worship you for who you are we worship you hallelujah hallelujah we Worship you. Ha 
The collect for today, we say together, Holy God, you have called witnesses from every nation and revealed your glory in their lives. Grant to us the same faith and love that following their example, we may be sustained by their fellowship and rejoice in their triumph through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. We turn now to the ministry of the word, our Old Testament reading from Ruth chapter 3, 1 to 5, and chapter 4, 13 through 17. Naomi, her mother-in-law, said to her, My daughter, 
I need to seek some security for you so that it may be well with you. Now, here is our kinsman, Boaz, with whose young women you have been working. See, he is winnowing barley tonight at the threshing floor. Now, wash and anoint yourself and put on your best clothes and go down to the threshing floor. But do not make yourself known to the man until he has finished eating and drinking. When he lies down, observe the place where he lies. Then go and uncover his feet and lie down, and he will tell you what to do. She said to her, all that you tell me, I will do. Now, ch chapter 4, verse 13 to 17. So Boaz took Ruth, and she became his wife. When they came together, the Lord made her conceive, and she bore a son. Then the woman said to Naomi, Blessed be the Lord, who has not left you this day without next of kin, and may his name be renowned in Israel. He shall be to you a restorer of life and a nourisher of your old age, for your daughter-in-law who loves you, who is more to you than seven sons, has borne him. Then Naomi took the child and laid him in her bosom and became his nurse. The women of the neighborhood gave him a name, saying, A son has been born to Naomi. They named him Obed. He became the father of Jesse, the father of David. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsive Psalm numbered 24 or 580 in our voices in praise. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who live in it. For he oh, yes. has founded it, it on the seas and establish it on the rivers. Who shall ascend the hill of the Lord, and who shall stand in his holy place? Those who have clean hands and pure hearts, who do not lift up their souls to what is false, and do not swear deceitfully. They will receive blessing from the Lord, and vindication from the God of their salvation. Such is the company of those who seek him, who see the face of the God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O ancient doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory, the Lord of hosts? He is the King of glory. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and forever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Epistle from Hebrews 9, 24 to 28. For Christ did not enter a sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again, as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have had to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once for all at the end of the age to remove sin by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once, and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly waiting for him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The reading from the gospel is found in that according to Mark chapter 12, beginning at verse 38 and ending at verse 44. Glory, Glory to, to you, you, O Lord. O God. Ali, Ali, Ali.
As he taught, he said, Beware of the scribes who like to walk around in, the, in long robes and to be greeted with respect in the marketplaces and to have the best seats in the synagogues and places of honor at banquets. They devour widows' houses and, for the sake of appearance, say long prayers. They will receive the greater condemnation. He sat down opposite the treasury and watched the crowd putting money into the treasury. Many rich people put in large sums. A poor widow came and put in two small copper coins, which are worth a penny. Then he called his disciples and said to them, Truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all those who are contributing to the treasury. For all of them have contributed out of their abundance, but she, out of her poverty, has put in everything she had, all she had to live on. This is the Gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ, our Savior. The hymn numbered 92, redeemed by the precious blood of the Lamb. the words that the Lord has laid upon his heart today as Reverend Dr. George Mulrain shares with us. Today, the Sunday after the 1st of November, All Saints Day, is observed in many of our churches in memory of those loved ones from our congregations who are numbered among the saints who from their labors rest. They are enlisted in the church triumphant in heaven, where the trials and troubles of this world are no longer theirs. The pain and suffering that we mortals endure do not affect them. They are resting. They are at peace. They are safe and secure in the arms of the loving creator. Safe and secure. And this is what I take 
as God's message for me to share today. The dominant word is security, which is of much concern in the present. Security is the state of being free from danger, free from fear, free from threat. And we all express the need for safe and secure homes where no thieves will attempt to enter, hence the presence of burglar bars. When purchasing a home, prospective buyers will want to know whether the environment is safe and secure, especially for children. We know, sadly, that there are certain areas in our cities where one is advised against living there due to gang-related activity, drug involvement, and other potential criminal association. It is amazing how security has emerged as a big concern throughout our world. There is an abundance of security companies, many of whom will install the relative equipment in our homes to make us feel comfortable. Numerous security guards are patrolling shops, uh, plazas, schools, churches, and other places where men, women, and children are known to congregate. Security cameras are installed at strategic locations in city areas, hopefully to deter those who would threaten the peace and quiet of the streets, including the ones who might be terrorists. And even as we boast about the wonders of modern technology, we have to reckon with cybersecurity. No one wants to contemplate that email accounts can be hacked and that extra special care has to be taken by those who do online banking. Those saints who are resting from their labors, they do not have to worry about such things because they are at peace, safe and secure in heavenly places. I believe that God is wanting me to say something about being safe and secure an account of readings from the book of Ruth that, refer, uh, that featured in the lectionary last week Sunday and today. Naomi had migrated from Judah with her husband Elimelech and two sons Malon and Chilion to live in Moab. And while there, she experienced the death of her husband and of her two grown-up sons who had married Opa and Ruth, Moabite women. She became concerned about the security of her daughter-in-law, or both daughters-in-law, and she suggested that they should return to their families. And so I read in Ruth 1, verses 8 and 9, Go back, each of you, to your mother's house. May the Lord deal kindly with you as you have dealt with the dead and with me. The Lord grant that you may find security, each of you, in the house of your husband. Now security, in Naomi's thinking, was associated with a protective household, a protective family. One daughter-in-law responded positively to the suggestion. The other insisted that her place was with the family she had adopted through her marriage. Naomi no doubt felt responsible for the security of Ruth. Ruth, who had made up her mind to stick with mother-in-law through thick and thin. And I read in Ruth chapter 3, verse 1, My daughter, I need to seek some security for you, so that it may be well with you. When the two returned to Judah, Ruth had fulfilled two conditions that the people of Judah associated with someone who was in need of security. According to the laws enshrined in the sacred books, security must be guaranteed for three types of individuals, widows, orphans, and strangers, or foreigners. Widows no longer had the protection of husbands. Orphans no longer had the protection of parents. And foreigners had not the advantage of easy access to benefits that the locals enjoyed. Ruth was both widow and foreigner. And as we read further into the narrative, we encounter Boaz, 
who had been impressed with and interested in Ruth. And it so happened that he was able, in accordance with the leverate marriage custom, to become united in marriage with her. Now, with the leverate marriage, the brother of a deceased man may marry his brother's widow. If not the brother, then whoever happens to be the willing next of kin. Boaz did the noble thing by consulting in the presence of the elders the one closest to Elimelech, Naomi's late husband. He wanted to determine whether that individual was interested in the dead man's estate. He was not. And so this situation facilitated with ease the marriage of Ruth and Boaz. Security for Ruth, in the manner just described, had a positive outcome insofar as there was a covenant agreement between God and the people of Israel. God's promise to be their God entailed, among other things, the assurance of divine protection. The family started by Boaz and Ruth meant security for Israel in that the promise of a savior to Israel was fulfilled in the line started by Obed, the father of Jesse, the father of David. Jesus the Christ, savior, was of the household and lineage of David. And incidentally, we note how much emphasis there was in those days about the supreme importance of the male in that the genealogy is traced through them and not through the female. And the psalm suggested for reading in today's lectionary is Psalm 127, which says, and I quote, sons are indeed a heritage from the Lord, the fruit of the womb a reward. Like arrows in the hand of a warrior are the sons of one's youth. Happy is the man who has his quiver full of them. He shall not be put to shame when he speaks with his enemies in the gate. So the focus in this message on security must of necessity emphasize salvation, which is why Jesus Christ came to dwell on earth. Even as we contemplate the need for security in today's world, we are conscious of the root cause, human sinfulness. It is the sinfulness of men and women of criminal intent that causes abductions, kidnappings, human trafficking, the abuse and sexual exploitation of unsuspecting women and of children. It is human sinfulness that is the root cause of corruption in its many forms. Jesus Christ came on earth sent by a loving God in the hope that we would imitate his life of love, of peace, of justice. Committing our lives to Jesus Christ as Savior would give to us a profound faith, a sense of safety, a sense of security, because we will know that whatever happens in life, God is ever present and in control. And the amazing truth about God is the divine awareness that we need the Savior. Although we may not fully understand it, but God demonstrated love for us all. And as it is expressed in Paul's letter to the Romans, chapter 5, verse 8, but God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. And this is the message that should, be, should, should make us feel secure so that while we live and move and have our being on this earth, even while we try to make our homes and environments secure, there is this deeper security, security of a spiritual nature that is available to us. In Hebrews chapter 9, verse 24 and following, we find these words, For Christ did not enter the sanctuary made by human hands, a mere copy of the true one, but he entered into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God 
on our behalf. Nor was it to offer himself again and again as the high priest enters the holy place year after year with blood that is not his own. For then he would have to suffer again and again since the foundation of the world. But as it is, he has appeared once and for all at the end of the age to remove sin and by the sacrifice of himself. And just as it is appointed for mortals to die once and after that the judgment, so Christ, having been offered once to bear the sins of many, will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to save those who are eagerly awaiting him. And so the removal of sin, salvation, is crucial today. And this is where Jesus Christ, the Son of God, features significantly. We have this offer today from God, namely the security of knowing that we are not going to be lost and floundering, but that we are cared for by God because of the Son, Jesus Christ, Savior. Yes, security par excellence. One of the noticeable lessons we may learn from Jesus about security is that it entails a total commitment to God. As the hymn says, a safe stronghold our God is still. Let us put our trust in him. Now in the gospel reading from Mark chapter 12, we note how Jesus hits out at those who lack humility and those who love to give the impression of their importance, even as they flaunt in public places the contents of their wardrobes and their wallets. He affirmed the poor widow who, in her humility, gave as offering everything she had, which was worth a penny. Too many persons today have not received the message of Jesus as they think they are safe and secure because of their wealth. They might be wealthy according to earthly standards, but not insofar as the kingdom of heaven is concerned. And so, my brothers and sisters, today, as we remember persons who have departed this life and are now part of the church triumphant in heaven, let us spare a thought. Let us think not only about our earthly security, but also about whether we are secure for all times. And the question may be asked, am I, are you, are we spiritually secure? The answer will be positive if we can state beyond any doubt that we are men and women of faith. We have accepted Jesus Christ as Savior, as the means whereby God assures us that you and I may have salvation. We are saved from the grips of sin, willing to live according to the commandments of God, ever showing love towards our fellow travelers on the road of life. In the final analysis, when we shall have breathed our last and departed this life, having lived by faith, we can rest assured that we too will enter into that glorious company of the saints who now worship in the church triumphant in heaven. We too will be safe and secure in the arms of the Creator because we will have faithfully lived and faithfully died. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, creator of heaven and earth, and of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us human beings and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he became incarnate from the Virgin Mary and was born a human being. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. 
in accordance with the scriptures, he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father, and who with the Father and the Son is worshiped and glorified. He has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you and also with you. Please give your attention to the following announcements. The welcome and dedication service for the Reverend Pauline McCarty will be held on Sunday, November 7, 2021 at 4 p.m. Remember that she is now in the Montego Bay Mount Ward circuit and they will be hosting the service and the information will be provided for the Zoom link. The Edson Methodist Church on Winward Road celebrates its 100th anniversary of its chapel, 1921 to 2021, and as a congregation in faithful witness, 1884, 2021, 137 years. This will be held on Sunday, November 14th, 2021 at 10.30 a.m. You will be receiving the link so that you can join us on the media platform. Let us now give God thanks for the offering received. Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all the gifts of tithes and of our offerings. And as we ask you now, Lord God, to bless our tithes and offerings, may we give you of our time, may we give you of our talent, and may we, like these gifts, be used for the building up of your kingdom, now and forevermore. Amen. Prayers of intercession. On those days when we are tempted to judge others, may we instead pray. And when we are in danger of sliding into pessimism, may we turn to you for help. Live in God, hear our prayer. And help us to overcome evil with grace, mercy, and peace. At those occasions when world hunger and homelessness seem overwhelming, give us the tenacity to do what we can and encourage others to do likewise. Live in God, hear our prayer. And help us to overcome evil with grace, mercy, and peace. In moments when the threat of disease or disablement looms over us, and what is worse when it threatens our loved ones, Help and guide us. Live in God, hear our prayer. And help us to overcome evil with grace, mercy, and peace. At those seasons when world is, the world seems to have gone mad with suspicion and fear, and when they turn again to more violence and terror, come to our aid. Live in God, hear our prayer and help us to overcome evil with grace, mercy, and peace. In situations where politicians seem arrogant and foolish, and when church looks like wringing its hands, please give us wisdom to seek solutions. Live in God, hear our prayer. And help us to overcome evil with grace, mercy, and peace. At those times when the divisions in the church provoke scorn, and when we are tempted to make excuses rather than repent and mend our ways, live in God, hear our prayer. And help us to overcome evil with grace, mercy, and peace. On occasions when death, broken relationships, and divorce cause havoc among our friends or in church, show us how to be agents of Christ Jesus. Live in God, hear our prayer and help us to overcome evil with grace, mercy, and peace. God of infinite reserves, you have entrusted us, your people, with responsibilities. 
With your help, we can do far more than is humanly possible. Without you, we will do far less. Fill us now with your Holy Spirit, that we may be channels of your saving and healing love through Jesus Christ, the light of the world and the love of our lives. Amen. The Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. of the Lord be with you and also with you. If you're offering your gift upon the altar and there remember that your brother or sister has a grievance against you, leave your gift before the altar and go your way. First be reconciled with your brother or sister and then come and offer your gift. My sisters, my brothers, as you gather in your home spaces, I ask that where you have your elements ready, that you now make the necessary preparation to engage in the sacraments, sacrament of the Lord's Supper. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we join in the hymn of everlasting praise. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed are you, Lord God, King of the universe. 
And blessed is your son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, who on the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had broken it, he gave thanks and gave it to them, saying, Take this and eat it. This is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. Christ has died. Christ is risen. Christ. The bread which we break is a sharing in the body of Christ. Amen. The cup of blessing which we bless is a sharing in the blood of Christ. Amen. Though we are many, we are one body because we share the one loaf and partake of the same drink. Let us join in the prayer of humble access. Lord, we come to your table trusting in your mercy and not in any goodness of our own. We are not worthy to gather up the crumbs under your table, but it is your nature always to have mercy and on that we depend. So feed us with the body and blood of Jesus Christ, your Son, that we may forever live in him and he in us. Amen. You who truly and sincerely repent of your sins and are in love and charity with your neighbors and have promised to lead a new life, draw near with faith and take this holy sacrament to your comforts. We invite you in your own spaces now to receive the body of Christ broken for you. May you take, may you eat, and may you feed on him by faith in your heart with thanksgiving. Amen. The blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ which was shed for you. May you take and may you drink in remembrance and may you truly be thankful. Amen. The blood of Christ. May you rise and may you go in peace to serve Christ. And may the God of peace go with you. Amen. Let us now join in the prayer of thanksgiving. And we thank you, Lord, that you have fed us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of the heavenly banquet prepared for all humankind. Amen. We invite our children and our young people just to receive the blessing. Lord, we ask your special blessing upon the children and the young people gathered. We pray for the children and the young people of our nation and particularly as they face going back into the physical space, we pray your blessing upon them. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Our closing hymn, number 277, Through the Love of God our Savior.
let us receive the benediction. Go forth in strength, knowing the hope to which God has called you, knowing the glorious inheritance God has reserved for the saints, and the power God has bestowed for those who believe, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.